Hi my precious friends, I am back in Norway and I'm in this quarantine here in a very beautiful place all by myself in this little farm in the countryside and I just feel God's presence so strong. When I came in here I start crying, I just felt the peace of God overwhelm me. And I woke up this morning with that enormous peace and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I start praying and weeping here and I just want to pray with you guys. Because I really hope that this season in our lives will change the church, will change the body of Christ. That we really, really will seek him earnestly and have a personal relationship to Christ. Regardless of our gifts and talents and everything we're so good at in the church that we are obedient to do. God wants our hearts. He wants a holy people. He wants to holify us. He wants to set us aside to be, to be made holy and pure and cleansed and have a personal relationship. And I was reading this morning from the book of Acts when they saw Jesus appear in the sky and they went into God. Jesus said to them that, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. And the next day, they went to the upper room. There were 100, 120 people there. And the Holy Spirit fell. The fire came. The wind started blowing people. And I just want to pray for the body of Christ right now. Let your wind blow. Let your wind from heaven blow again, Father God. The same wind that touched the disciples so mightily. So they start speaking in other tongues. That fire, that wind, let it come and blow through our hearts in this season. Father God, I pray that when we come together again, we will be changed. We will not be the same crowd. We will speak differently. We will act differently. We will pray differently. Let this time be the time where you are circum circumcising our hearts and cutting off the branches that didn't bear fruit in our lives. All of us. Let, it, let this be the season where you purified your bride. Where you really made a move, Father God. Where we were set aside for the end time. Where you even took away our gifts. Because it's not about our gifts. It's about our hearts. When you were... <coughs> sorry. When you wanted to put a, a, a servant and, and, and a mantle on the servant, you looked at the heart. You looked at the heart. You find a heart that was wholehearted with you, that loved you. And Father, I pray that you will train, change our hearts. Change our hearts so our hearts are like you. You who has such a love for the lost, for the souls. Your, so, your heart is filled with love for the souls. The people that are the lowest people on this planet that, that other people are rejecting, they're neglecting. These are the people you are defending and your heart goes out to those people. So Father God, I just pray this prayer. I just pray this prayer. Wait a minute. Sorry, guys. I'm sorry, Jesus, <coughs> I'm sorry, Jesus, 
Come with your tabernacle, come with your throne in every house, every home, every apartment, every little room. That people don't see this time as something difficult or like they are suffering in their aloneness. Let them find a time of rejoice that this is a supernatural time, Father God, where we can meet you on our knees and be changed forever. Change your church forever. Change us. Come with revival into our hearts. Father God, come with your fire into my heart. And let every person that I am in contact with be touched with that fire. And I pray for my friends, my sisters and brothers that they will catch the fire. They will catch the fire from heaven. Let your mighty wind blow. Change your church forever in this time. And when we come together, we are changed. We are the bride who are wholehearted, who are loving one another, who are abiding in you, who doesn't have the competition or the fleshly behavior or gossiping or talking be, be behind each other's back anymore. Enough of that in the name of Jesus. Let those branches be cut off and put to the fire. And I pray that you will raise up out of this season your purified bride. Please God, let your wind come and blow through your church and blow through the body here on earth and unify your church. Purify your saints. Purify every man and woman and don't let them lift up their gifts and think and be deceived that it's about the gift. When I have the gift, then I am right with God. It's not true. It's not enough with the gift. It's not enough with a gift. We need to have a deep, heartful relationship to Christ, people. That's what he wants. He gave us the gifts, yes. And it is for edifying the church, I know. And to, to, to correct and to, to inspire each other, I know that. I'm not saying that we should neglect the gift, but it's not about the gift. Is not enough you can do a lot of things in the body of Christ and you were good at it you do great things for God and you are disciplined and character everything you know but you you missing something because you forgot your first love you forgot a deep relationship with Christ that's what it's all about people He's searching for our hearts because in when he gets our hearts, he will place his heart in our hearts. And his heart is full of love in the Old Testament. You could see in Amos 4 where God is so furious because people are neglecting the, 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 the small people in the society, they were neglecting the poor, the people that were, that were struggling in the society. And God was furious with people that didn't see these people who were suffering, but they were just thinking about themselves. And God has the same heart through Jesus Christ, only that we have mercy. But Jesus came to, to, to show us something. He walked among us, the Son of God, and He showed us which kind of people did He hang with. He was defending the widow, the, He was helping the prostitute, the people that were drinking, sitting in bars, the people that were lost, the people that the, 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 the Pharisees called unclean and sinful. That was the people he reached out to and he showed them love. He forgave them their sins. He preached to them and he, he built them up. He delivered them from demons. He set them free. He gave them their new identity. 
and they were followers of him because they felt loved. They felt loved, they felt seen by Jesus. And this is the heart we're supposed to have. Enough of praying for ourselves. Start praying like God wants you to pray. Pray for souls. Pray for the people out there. Care about those people in your church that are walking alone, that maybe have issues and you consider them difficult. Pray more so you can have that heart that can reach out to those people. God is looking at that. He wonders what we are doing with those people. And start praying for burdens for souls. Start praying for burden for souls to be saved, to be healed, to be delivered in your town, in your region, in your nation, in your church. There's no point to go back and, back and forth to the church every Sunday doing the same thing, talking to the same people and pray a little prayer for those that are struggling. They really need help. They need our love, the love that God has for them. And love is practical and love is stretching yourself. We can't only do things that we like, that is comfortable to us. That is inside our comfort zone where we, uh, we, we can't be too tired, we can't be too weared out. We can't do too, you know, and we're thinking about ourselves. We have to start thinking about those people that are lost, that are struggling, that are bound by darkness, that have needs, that are lonely, isolated, and they're walking in our churches, people, and they're in our neighborhood, and they're at our workplaces. All of us know people like that. And God wants us to reach out with his heart, his heart of compassion, his heart of love in a practical way. Start praying for people in your neighborhood. Start praying for people in your church. Stretch out. Don't be so focused on your needs. Do more. Expand. Show more grace. Pray more. Open your heart more. God's heart is big. And he wants us to have his heart. That's why I'm crying this morning. Because I can feel that God is really, he longs for opening our hearts. It's not about how many nice worship songs we know. How many nice sermons we listen to. How many good friends we have in our churches. It's not even about that. It's about what do we do with what we have been given? How much do you do where you are planted? And we can always do more. I remember I saw this movie, Schindler's List. You all seen that movie, right? From the Second World War, where the Jewish people um, are in concentration camps. And this Schindler, he tried to help Jewish people secretly. Uh, even if he was a German, he did it secretly. And in the last scene, you see this, he's like crying. He said, I wish I could have helped one more, one more. And he helped so many people, but yet in his heart, he was like, if I only had more time, I could help one more out of that concentration camp. I could rescue one woman more and one man more. And this is the attitude we need to have. One more. Imagine if Jesus came back tomorrow. What, what, what would you do today with the people that you're surrounded? What would you do with your relatives? Wouldn't you lay on your knees? Wouldn't you call them? Wouldn't you do everything you could to rescue people around you today? Today is the day of salvation and we need to work. The Bible says we need to work while it's still light because the darkness will come more and more. 
and take over this planet. But then we are gonna go. But we need to have the heart of God who has the heart for souls and for the, the people that really need us. I hope that the church will come back together when this is over to really show a change to really show the heart of Christ to one another, to really stretch out to that town that you have a church in and not sit in that church and, and mind your own business, so, so to speak. But think about all those people in that city that are gonna go straight to hell. And God has placed us there in these places to be the light. And we make it so comfortable for ourselves. We hardly want to reach out. We think, you know, it's enough that I'm sitting in my little church building and pray. I, at least I did something. Yes, it's good that you pray, but we need more than prayer. We need action. What did Jesus do? He's our example. He was there. He was with the crowds. It says that they were following him. People that were demon-possessed. That was bound and he and, and, and sick. They were following him. The crowds were following Jesus because power went out from him. And he was filled with love and compassion. So they find a priest among them who came to them in their needs, so didn't condemn them, who was there with them and suffered with them and gave them love and stretch out their, his hand to those people. He didn't sit in the church building. He was out there where people had needs. And this is my cry. And I think it's the Father's cry. Yeah. I think it's the Father's cry today. Pray for souls, people. Pray for the compassion of God in your heart. Let him stretch out your heart. We are not here to perform. We're not here to show one another how good we are behind that pulpit to sing or preach, how deep we can be. It's not about that. It's about our hearts. It's about that one man or woman that can go to, to hell if I don't do anything. Yeah. So this is my pray, prayer today. God bless you, my precious friends. It's good to be back in Norway. It's peaceful here. And I really hope that God's peace will surround you wherever you are. His peace, his compassion, his love, his joy, his strength, his compassion, his cry for the nation. Let it come out of you today. God bless you. Amen.